Okay, so <clears throat> so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is William, and um, you can call me William as well. So uh, today is my um first day of not the first day. It's my first time to attend uh such a big public conference uh PNSQC and. And the title that um, I want to deliver today is about my research on the test case prioritization using the deep learning with the hybrid approach. Okay, <clears throat> so um, so I will go to the first uh first introduction about myself. Okay, so um, actually, I'm an Intel employee, which um, who uh, who takes the master course uh, at the uh, Malaysia University, which is uh, called the University of Malaysia Pahang UMP. And um, before that, when um, when I studied degree time, I have uh, become the ISTQB certified tester at the year of 2012. And after my graduation, right, I I starting to um to involve in the validation field. And right since then until right now is about nine years time. And I'm local and I'm actually a local uh Pidang people uh who loves to travel around but um but since uh there's some uh circumstance that um unable to begin uh, so so today will be the uh conduct through through the zoom so as with um environment including like go to the beach and go to the jungle to have a chill out. Then um when talk back to my fear, right? So uh, uh in validation, what I most believe the motto is the God we trust, the rest we validate. And actually this uh, motto is um being motivated by my mentor in my university. So um so yeah. So uh, let's go to the main topic of today. Okay, so first thing first is I want to uh, let you guys to, to warm up first. Okay, so there are two pictures at, at the next slide. Okay, so um, from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, so I want to um let you guys have a have a think. Which side of the picture will have the much more easier test cases to test? You guys may have may write the vote on the chat box, either left or right. Yes, most of the people are answered correctly. So, like, so if you want to do the test cases, so the left hand side will be the much more easier. So, which means that you need to, you need to have two test cases to fully cover or fully um cover your coverage, your test coverage. Okay. So what's wrong with the right hand side? You you see the pilot um the dashboard there. There are a lot of buttons, a lot of buttons, which means that it will come out a lot of combination. Like for example, if you want to run, if you want to uh run the um test cases, with cover all the coverage. Okay. So you need about. Like for example, I, I take a um simple number like uh thousand 
1,000 to 10,000, and sometimes will be more than that, then, right? So at that, at that point of time, and you get a uh, management, give you a certain period of time, like for example, one week, one week time. I want you to run all the test cases to, in order to cover, to fully cover your test coverage. So, so do you think that in one week time, regardless you trigger your automation or you run your test manually, are you able to cover all your tests? In one week, are you able to cover all your tests? You guys may have a have a feedback on that. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tony, you are you are right. So so yeah. So with that, uh, which is um this is so called like um mission impossible unless uh, James uh, no, um, uh, come to save the world, maybe, probably, we can we can do it in one week. So right now, we don't have James one in real life. So it will come to the, uh, to the real in production. Okay, so next slide will be, will be this one. So, so here is the introduction for my uh, research topic today. So uh, like exhaustive testing is nearly impossible for complex use cases as what you saw just now on the flight, uh, on the airplane dashboard, okay? So the second point is like, you, it will use up a lot of duration to validate those combinations, especially for the airplane test cases. Okay, so what is the objective of this research? First, we are looking to acquire a suitable deep learning algorithm to help us to, to, uh, to do the categorization or classification. And then, Second is to evaluate the performance of, of developed algorithm in software validation process. Okay, so um, so next is in our in my research. So the the project scope will be develop a deep learning algorithm combined with the greedy approach, which is uh which is so-called, I said, a hybrid approach, okay? So what is out of scope is I will not develop the automation framework and this approach will not only focus on the standalone project, okay? So which means that, for example, um, company B that want to, to and hire this approach to the uh, to their um, execution or or validation. So yeah, they are welcome to do that. Okay. So uh, next will be um, um will be about my literature review. Uh, so so um, my current literature review uh, overview is I separate into three categories. So first is the test case prioritization. Second will be the test coverage. And the third one will be the deep learning in the software test validation. So right now, I will go to the first point, which is test case prioritization. So in test case prioritization, so um, Yeshen has mentioned that the behavior of the pattern 
selection of the particular test will influence the prioritization of the test cases in the group of the test case in the pool. The pool. So this is a finding that uh, Yenshan has tested. And the second uh, researcher had, uh, named Isaac has discussed that the previous researcher has coded one test case prioritization using the automatic history-based approach, okay? So in the third one is uh, in the re reinforcement learning of the test case prioritization paper, we are clearly to understand that the test prioritization is depends on the number of cycles, feature recorded, and the uh, optimal ranking. So, um, so in a nutshell, so this one might be a little bit blurring, but um, in the next in the next few slides, uh, I will have a clear picture explanation on that. So, so I will go to the next uh, to the next slide, which is I uh, will cover the test coverage. Okay, so uh, in the test coverage part so the things that we need to ensure that is we need to maximize the requirement coverage which is um, has been uh, founded by other researchers and the second one is applying the pairwise testing or the t-wave testing which is uh, conducted this research has been conducted by the Prof Kama from UMP, which is my direct lecturer for uh for my software testing study. Okay. So next we'll be uh going to the deep learning in the software test validation. Okay, so in the deep deep learning in software validation, uh, software test validation is um, Iran has proposed the quadrant approach, which is like um, it separates out the uh, the issue into a uh, quadrant. So in the quadrant, they they will um, they will classify that either um your your input is for which cluster, which quadrant, okay? So uh, for the second uh, second researcher, which is named Kai, is um, they are using the deep neural network, which is called DNN, as a tool to performing the test case prioritization. Okay. So out of um, those uh, researchers, who has done the great work on those areas, which is um, they are focusing either on the uh, prioritization, but doesn't um, analyze the input or I can say the, the text input or something else. Okay, so that's why I came out this uh, this proposal of the research to enhance and try to make the validation for the automation, either for the automation or the to ease the manual execution. Okay, so uh, next one will be the next slide will be uh, will be talk about my proposed methodology. So in my proposed methodology overview, so I have uh, put it into five critical phases. So uh, first is the data acquisition phase. Second is the data preprocessing phase. And the third one will be the feature extraction and classification phase. Then the fourth one is the data merging phase. And the last one will be the test case prioritization phase. So, so I will show you 
a flow chart or the uh yeah can say flow chart to illustrate that how these five critical phases is has been implemented. So as as you can see, so I separate into three main categories. So the first one will be the um the uh git lock. I use a git lock as the as a medium to categorize that. Right now I want to uh the the git um the git message coming in is under which category. So this, this one is the is the pro oops, sorry. This one will be the the git log um the git log and analysis and then the second one is the it's like um just fetch out the information from the test case database okay so the last one will be the uh, to merge between the green section and the orange section okay so uh, just now the critical five phases is first is this one, the data acquisition, then the data pre-processing and the feature extraction and classification. And the fourth one is the data merging and the last one is the test case prioritization. Okay, so next I will uh, briefly uh, explain to you what is all regarding about? So, for the our uh, first for the first uh, category, so is which is um data acquisition phase. So, right now is um this phase will be will clone a branch from the repository from the Git repository. Then inside the Git folder or inside the Git, we need to collect the log and export it into the text file, all right? Then after you export it, so it will become, uh, it will have the detail like uh, the date, the author, the, the, the git message and etc. So that is the raw data. So once the raw data is has been collected, so the next one you need to go to the pre-processing, which is you need to perform the meta metadata removal. For example, the commit hash, the author name, the email, the header tag, and the branch name as well. So just left the pure, the pure um, how to say the pure commit message from your git. Okay, so. Once you have all those uh, filtered out and you will need to perform like, for example, the, the, like, um, the stop words kind of things, that one will be uh, going to the next, to the next phase, okay. So at here, so, um, we were doing the feature extraction and the uh, classification phase. So we are using the RNN, which is part of uh, is uh, LSTM things. And the formula is we are using the HD equals to FW with HT minus one and the XT. So which means that it will reading the words, words by words, and then it will remember. And the, for the um, not important one, it will get it will get replaced or we so called forget. And after that, it will come out the results of like uh, that particular git commit. What is um, 
what is the category that it falls under to? Okay. So once we are able to get the result already, so we can start to uh, select or we so-called to populate. Okay. So, uh, so test case population is the, okay. So, uh, so the test case population or the list. Okay. So, um, so once we've done that, once we've done that, so, uh, what is the, are uh, using it. So the FTC is, uh, the filtered test cases and the TCP is the test case pool and the C is the category label label. Okay. So, um, so why I use the intersect, uh, intersect, um, logo or intersect symbol, which is I want to take the com uh, the, the the common the common result like for example you do the SQL query so like you select um a from table blah blah blah, blah. where blah um where like um a equals to you need to find similar the particular keywords so once you query out is you will save into um into a variable or into the list so the end the end symbol is about like you do the perform you perform the query okay so after this we will go to the um main our main actor at here, which is a test case prioritization. So, uh, so in this uh, test case prioritization, right? So we will implement the test case reduction method, which is so-called the greedy algorithm to remove the redundancy of the test cases and prioritize the test cases by maximizing the coverage of the requirement. So, uh, so uh, the formula that are showing here is derived from myself. And the thing is, it's a little bit complicated. <laughs> okay. So I can use the layman term to, to explain it, which is the least, um, the least requirement that covered by the test case will be get prioritized. Then will be uh then after that it will go accordingly. Like for example, uh later I have an example at here. So um probably uh later I will explain it further. Okay. So uh after we done this we we can get the how to say the most efficient test cases that we can be passed to the automation to execute, or we can pass the summarized test case, uh, paradise one, pass to the uh, executioner to do their job. Okay. So the Next one is uh the the result that I obtained. So um so the the graph shown here is a little bit not ideal. Okay, I can say it's not ideal because uh first the the hardware that like um I can say that I have hardware limitation on that. So uh the second one is The duration, the time duration is a little bit shorter. The runway for me is a little bit shorter. So, so, uh, so this is I have run a few couple um a couple a couple of times in order to get 
uh, these results. Okay. So um, for the test case prioritization part is I have done the two, uh, two, uh, I can say uh, two type of uh, test cases. So uh, first, you when you see the RTM number one, we can consider it as a small test requirement. Okay, so in original, right? So we do have uh, 30 test cases. After we implement the test case prioritization algorithm, so we are successfully reduced from 30 to 12. So it's about like 60% reduction, okay? And for the uh, RTN number two, which is considered as a medium or big uh, test case pool. So once we implement the algorithm, so it reduced from 51 to nine. And the efficiency is about 82%. Why, it, why the RTM2 is, um, is reduced so much is because of when I start to, to do the draft uh, test cases, right? So I put the, how to say, uh, the redundant test cases is overlap each other. And the critical test cases is only like two to three critical test cases. And, and others one is like, it will like overlap each other. Okay, so when I trigger the the algorithm to run, so it will select the best test cases for me. Okay, so um until now. Do you guys have any question? If have, then uh, please can can put it onto the chat box. Then I will answer it later on. Okay. So next will be the the discussion. So on on the test analysis part, right? So uh, we are using the LSTM, and then uh, the loss and the accuracy is in directly proportional relationship uh, from the result comparison. So the loss and the accuracy is highly affected on the dropout and the recurrent dropout value in the LSTM. So, so basically, right, these uh, values is falls under between zero and one. Okay. So uh, then what is, the purpose is to prevent the uh, overfitting situation from happening. And then the current research that I'm using right now is using the 0 0.2. And I got trying to use the 0 0.5 or 0 0.8. So that one is need. It used a lot of times to train. And as I said uh, before, that is due to my hardware dependency. So I choose to not using uh, this 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. So I choose to use 0 0.2. Okay. So uh, so for the second part is for the test case uh, prioritization part. So the advanced greedy approach has been implemented. Okay, so what is this? It is the list of the requirement that will get prioritized and the redundant test cases. It is the list that will consolidate by the test cases that cover the greatest number of requirements. Okay, so another one is uh, JPCT form better than SPCT. That one is uh, conducted by the Japanese um, researcher. And I compare the result with 
the JPCD and the propose uh, the algorithm that I'm doing right. So JPCD able to cover 73% of the coverage of the total coverage. Meanwhile, my proposed uh, algorithm are able to cover 100% of the requirement with the minimum test cases needed to run. Okay. okay. So uh, last but not least, I will go to the my conclusion. So um, my conclusion uh, will have three three types, uh, three category, which is uh, first is the research contribution. So my contribution is on the uh, enhanced pretty the, uh, the algorithm improving the improving the, the algorithm by helps to maximize the test case coverage from the up uh, like from the 73 percent as you guys saw just now up to 100 percent and reducing the duplicate duplicate test cases up to 80 percent okay so there are the benefits and there should sure have some limitation on that. So the first limitation is the STM will drag the performance of the CPU and the GPU and it will get affected by the epoch cycle. Okay. So the second one is the greedy algorithm are unable to perform the mix and match test cases, the test case prioritization Meanwhile, it will able to maximize the requirement coverage. Okay, so the third one is the comp uh, due to the private uh, uh, company for the internal project is prohibited for this research. So uh, I use the open source database, uh, which call name uh, customer complaints. Uh, used for this research. Okay, so the last one is the future works. So I believe that LSTM are able to train with the multiple epoch provided with the better hardware and the software requirement. So the second future works that can be done is, is the advanced pretty algorithm hopefully able to incorporate with the pairwise testing, which will help to removing much more um, test case redundancy happened either uh, from like from the greedy algorithm or from the pairwise uh, testing, testing. Okay. So um, right now is uh, my presentation is almost complete. Uh, I do have some uh some appendix that I want to show you all. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I will go to the appendix first. So uh, for the question part is, uh, I will answer it later on. So uh, this is the example of test cases that uh, I'm using. Okay, so uh, the when you see here, like one semicolon, one semicolon, zero, 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 that one is, uh, we can say that is the first, the first column or the first row is the requirement zero, one, two, three, four, until n. And then, um, and then the T0 to T19 is the test case. Okay. So the next one is the final test cases after the, uh, after the algorithm has been run completed. So right now, if you see, uh, oh, sorry. 
if you see the screenshot here, yeah, right. So after I run my uh, test case prioritization, so T5 is the only test cases that are very important and need to be covered. Why? You can see here. The second uh, the second line here. This represent the number of occurrence, right? So as you see, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. So the requirement number five is only the requirement that has been need to be run in order to to have the full coverage. Okay, so that's why you see this one is very important. So as you see the result, right? So you can see uh, zero, one, two, three, four. So T5 is, has been selected. And then after using the algorithm just now, so uh, the redundant one has been uh, removed and the most efficient one has been reserved. Okay, so this is the RTM number one that I'm showing you just now, which is reduced about 60%. Okay, right now I will go for the QA. Okay, so um, for the first question, can you share the corpus size and or how much compute time for the training session cost? Okay, so uh, for the training session cost, for one epoch, uh, if I using the value of 0 0.2 of the draw out, so I need to use about like seven to eight minutes for me to, to run it. Okay, but but I didn't uh I didn't um uh, collect it and put it into the into the slide here. Okay, so for the second question, is the feature factor the mapping between the test case attributes and the feature in the codes they correlate to. Okay, so if I get your question correctly, so do you mean is this one? The test case list? has been populated. Okay, very good. So, okay, uh, because due to uh, some PNC things, so I can like uh, give you a, a raw, or how to say, the very lean term explanation. So, as you can see, here is my phone, okay? And there is a few buttons at here, okay? And one uh, finger, uh, finger sensing here. So the T, uh, the, this row, the vertical column, right? Is like, for example, the first vertical column, I want to test. Am I able to open the phone? Okay. So like for example, the second vertical column is my fingerprint are able to unlock or not. And etc. etc. So like you see the T0 to for example to like to T5. And just now I said that uh, like, for example, the T5 is very important, right? It's only like one test case has been, uh, no, 
is the test case that must be covered because that requirement is only one. Okay. So for example, by using the requirement number five, is very important. So when I buy when I buy the phone, I need to make sure that I able to open the phone. Right. So that important test cases is I need to make sure that I'm able to open my uh, to turn on my phone, to boot up my phone. If I'm unable to boot up my phone, the remaining that is totally useless and is waste of time to continue to validate. Hope that uh my this explanation can help to allow you guys to have, have much more clear understanding. Okay. So besides that do you guys have any question on the floor? If don't have, then uh, here is my presentation. And thank you very much uh, for, um, before I end my presentation. So I want to take this opportunity to thanks to the PNSQC committee to, oh, sorry. What is the far future of your work? Okay, this is very good question. So, first is because, uh, because right now is I work for Intel. Okay, so this research is also made for my, uh, made for Intel do it and those are uh, algorithm or things right is very uh transparent because uh first of all is i never know uh got this uh advanced uh, software testing algorithm in this world before i take i'm taking the master the master courses so the ISTQB that I have previously is, I can say is very fundamental. And once I take the master courses, my lecturer, which is the, the author for the t testing, Prof Kamal, he has uh, like teach me a lot of techniques to, to learn. And somehow I feel that those isolate um, advanced testing method is able to like to, to work with each other closely. So uh, at my future work, right, I would like to incorporate those um uh, those methodology into add on top of my current current research. So I think the future wise is quite. It's quite bright. Yeah. So uh let me continue my uh my uh, uh my appreciation greetings to uh PNSQC. So uh first of all is I want to thank you, PNSQC committee. Uh select my paper to can have a uh, present here and although that uh, actually I want to fly to the Oregon to meet you guys to to um, like to present but uh, due to some some things happen happening to my side so I'm able to to do it so uh, really thank you very much to uh, to my paper reviewer uh, Cody and Philips that helping me to to uh, settle all the things and last but not least uh, the 
the new uh, PNSQC committee, Bushan. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And, and next year, I hope to see you guys face to face. Thank you very much. Have a good day to you. Bye-bye.